The Italian basil pesto is such a beauty. You can use that to make pastas, sandwiches or even pizzas. Now I'm going to show you how to make the fresh basil pesto and then use that to make a tomato and basil sandwich. So here are my ingredients. I have 30 grams of fresh basil that I just plucked from the garden. And I just love the smell of that basil. The fresher the basil, the better is your pesto. Now here I have about 15 grams of pine nuts, about a clove of garlic that I've peeled and put it in my mortar. I've got some salt as per taste, about 30 ml of extra virgin olive oil. Now the greener version of this olive oil is the best that you can use. Then about 15 grams of parmesan cheese and of course 15 grams of broccoli which is totally optional but I like to just make this healthy. Now let's start with crushing the garlic, just crush that away. Then we're going to add about 15 grams of pine nuts. The pine nut has a very nutty and a creamy flavor added to it. If you are allergic to nuts, then it's alright to miss out on the pine nuts. Pine nuts are milder than almonds, cashews or walnuts but it's not easily found everywhere and it's quite expensive. So it's all right to replace them. Now I've got this nicely crushed. I'm going to throw in the basil and put all of it in at once. I would never wash a basil when I'm using a fresh basil leaf because then it's just going to lose the flavors in the running water. As you're adding a new ingredient or building the layers of the pesto sauce, add in a pinch of salt and some of the olive oil to assist with the grinding. Now I have totally taken about 30 ml of olive oil that we'll use little at a time and then add in the entire 30 ml towards the end to make it a lot runnier. Just as you can smell the flavors of basil. That is so beautiful. I'm gonna add in 15 grams of grated parmesan cheese. Now you do want to keep this coarse and not very fine which is why we're using the mortar and pestle. Like I said broccoli is optional but chop them down to pieces before adding them in the mortar that assists in grinding them finely. Add in the salt as per your taste and obviously just keep tasting it at every step to know how much ingredients you like to add. Now I've just added about 30 ml of extra virgin olive oil. Now you do want to take a milder version of that because you want to enhance the flavor of the basil and keep the other flavors on the milder side. Now this is how creamy and green your pesto is going to be. I'm going to make a sandwich like I told you. So there goes my ciabatta breads that I bought from the store. Now you could either toast it or just make it plain like I'm doing. I like it both ways but I'm making it plain for now. I'm gonna slice in my tomatoes. So now I'm gonna butter the breads. I always find it easier to pull the butter this way. It spreads a lot easier on the bread. Once they're nicely buttered, I'm going to add in the pesto sauce to this. And as that's got its nice pesto sauce, I'm going to lay in the tomatoes on one side of the bread and the cheese slice on the other side of the bread. Now I have used the mature cheese slice but mozzarella cheese slice also goes really well with this sandwich. And that is my sandwich ready. If you have enjoyed my recipe for the basil pesto and tomato basil sandwich, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. I'll see you on my next recipe.